Welcome back, everyone, to the Hearthstone World Championships. I'm here with one of our very talented casters, Mr. Savitz, and I want to know uh, what you thought of that last match there. That was a bit of a back and forth. Yeah, it was a cool one. The Druid in the end, uh, well, the Druid meter, it was kind of based on the draws. I feel like that was a bit of just uh, just what, 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 got, what the cards were, but uh, a really cool showing from the like, base hunter. It's nice to see it come back for a little bit. Not everyone is playing it. It does have its weak matchups for those who don't like the deck that much. But I think it's it's uh, it's awesome to have it as part of the aggressive uh, strategies. Well, as one of the most analytical casters, as someone who, who plays competitively himself, uh, what have you really been impressed with with the players this weekend? I think Thysis and Ostkaka's lineups are, are pretty amazing. Those anti-aggro lineups. In, the, in Thysis' first match today, uh, I was just so impressed. Looking at the at the lineups and the lineup of his opponent, I feel like I, there's no way Thais loses unless something ridiculous happens. So I think those two players have maybe done their preparation the, the best and uh, have the most uh, uh, like uh, the best chances to to go far ba just based on the deck selections. Absolutely, they've done well in this tournament. We'll see how it all pans out in the games later on today and next weekend at BlizzCon. Don't go anywhere. More games next. Four versus Ostkaka! NA versus EU returns here at the Hearthstone World Championships. It's time for Hot Form versus Ostkaka. Only one player will be going to BlizzCon 4 now as we are uh, going into Group C winner's match. My name is Froden. I'm joined by the Kriparian and the Robert A. Wing. How are you guys doing? Crip, um, you know, wh what's it like being able to watch your fellow Toronto Canadian brethren fight here for a top eight spot? Well, he's doing well, so the feeling is positive. Um, I think this is a, a quite highly anticipated match. Um, both players are known to be, uh, you know, fairly creative, but also uh, very, very determined to do well. Mm -hmm. uh, also, both the rogue players in the tournament. That's as, right. As we talked about, uh, the rogue players are the only rogue players matched up against each other, and, and the only shaman players are matched up against each other right after this. It feels amusing to me, Robert, because it's like two rogue players uh, matched up against each other, and only one will go through. And in the next match, the two shaman players will be matching up, and only one can go through. What's up with that? Are you are you rigging the brackets, Blizzard? Well, both could eventually go through. Gotcha. That's true. Both can go Thanks through. Thanks for the save, Crib. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, I actually uh, think it's super cool, though, that we're seeing in the winners uh, round so far. We've seen priest rogue and shaman and as i said earlier i don't think people really expected that coming in so not yeah. at all and i don't i'm not sure what will happen i'm not sure who will win and if you guys have your predictions hashtag am win or hashtag eu win uh I, i'm not exactly sure who i'm picking to win i'm just gonna go ahead and say that i think hot form um has a lot to prove. I think mm -hmm. Oskaka has kind of gotten some of the reputation and uh, recognition from his peers, but Hotform is still on the fence. A lot of players are like, yeah, he's he's okay. But I think every time you underestimate him, he's definitely surpassed. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave my caster mm -hmm. bias out there for everyone to see. I'm I'm, I'm kind of rooting for Hotform a little bit, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, we also have the clash of styles. Hotform is just bringing True. his favorite decks, the things he's practiced with the most, the things that have uh, done well for him in the past. While Oskaka is basically bringing uh, new decks that work together to counter a specific archetype. Uh, he has uh, he's the, also just like Tice, one of the players running Patron Warrior again, specifically to t uh, target these aggressive decks. Yes, and um, I, f so far from what we've seen in the tournament, the stylistic play of countering a specific archetype has been more successful than just bringing three good decks. So, I think if you if you consider the results in the tournament so far, on that note, I think Oskaka is indeed favored. Tell what do you think about what about you, Robert? As we get ready for Druid versus Mage here, I think uh, Crip. You know, you touched on a very important point that I like so far in this matchup is the uh, contrast of styles. Uh, Ozkaka comes from a group of players who are very much like, what are the most powerful decks as I perceive them to be? Those are the ones I'm bringing. Uh, whereas Hotform, he very much prides himself on being an innovator. He's not a huge fan of just kind of what he calls, uh, you know, mindless aggro decks. Like, he likes to build his own things and bring them with him. And uh, it's very respectable. And, you know, to see him get this far, Obviously, you have to say, hey, it's working for him. And I'm most excited by the fact that regardless of the outcome of this, uh, you know, North America versus Europe showdown, uh, a rogue is going to the top eight of BlizzCon. Yep, yeah, it's guaranteed. And a shaman, as we talked about, coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's the one way to get the shamans through. Otherwise, there's just no chance, right? Right. There's the other way to look at it is uh, they'll force them to go through, just like you said. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, Mage versus Drew, we've seen this uh, a couple times already. And we've seen it go the Druid's way 
more times than not. In fact, I don't think Freeze Mage has been able to steal one from Druid so far this do? tournament. I'm Although they came really sure. close. I think the maybe maybe there was a win in there. Was not. there one? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think we've seen one just yet. That said, Oskaka is such an incredibly intelligent player. And if there's someone who can make this matchup work, uh, I have no doubt. At least Taj got pretty close as well, mm -hmm. so yeah. definitely doable. And uh, Oskaka, a competitor equal to the task, no doubt. Well, Hawkworm has an insane hand now. Yes. It might not look like one, but with the way that the Mana Crystal is going to come down, the Wild Growth on two puts them on four mana next turn, which leaves them with the Shredder. The turn after that is going to have five, and plus two from the Innervate is going to allow him to Dr. Boom on, what is that, turn three? Uh, turn four. Turn four. Because turn two, right, 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 right. turn three. It, it, the Wild Growth as is a coin. So yes, turn four, Dr. Boom. Very powerful, and the thing about the Dr. Boom is that it's not easy to remove. Oskaka would have to Frostbolt it twice in order to kill it. Normally, even if you Fireball, you spend your entire turn killing it, and then he not only has other minions like Boombots, but he develops mm -hmm. other things, and he also has Savage Roar. So if the Boombots stick around, that Lots is some damage. quick damage very, very fast. So yeah. One of the weaknesses of uh, Freeze Mage is obviously not including even one Polymorph. Polymorph, obviously a basic mage spell that does a great job of dealing with uh, big minions. Yeah, Dr. Booms, Ragnaros is the kind of stuff you sometimes see pop up. Oh, wow. I'm actually really surprised to see that because if he killed the Blood Mage, um, then Fireball. Fi Fireball would not go one for one with Dr. Boom. Well, then Loot Hoarder would kill it still, I think. Yeah, but then, then he'd lose the Loot Hoarder. In this case, he doesn't lose the Thalnos. The Thalnos oh, would, would right, kill yeah, the Boom Bot. Enough. Yeah, I might have just prioritized the just straight up attack damage mm -hmm. over the uh, the potential for fireball. So obviously, Hot Form had a reason for what he did. I think it's because the Wormrest Agent, um, you know, he wants to trade into that health, and then like then he can use that as a Savage War cleanup as, as as well. So like he can he can kill off the Loot Hoarder first, and then it has less chance to challenge whatever comes out in the following turns. Oskaka here. Um, by the way, doesn't have that answer even though we talked about it. He would have to Frostbolt, and that's only doing four damage. Um, and then he, just, he still what can't kill it do? off. So he's going to be looking what for answers do? in the following turns. By the way, if you're looking at Hot Form's hand here, next turn he goes into Emperor Thor's hand, which is going to discount the Druid of the Claw and the Savage Roar. Uh, Oskaka may be actually on a way shorter clock than he knows. Well, Os Oskaka actually has uh, non-stop freezes. With the Frostbolt and Dr. Room, it limits the amount of damage by a lot. And he can lead in with a Frost Nova, then a Blizzard, then a Flame Strike. So actually, even though Hot Form has a lot of power, uh, it won't be doing much for quite some time. Right, now that's actually a very fair point. And Druid of the Claw can be charged, which allows it to negate freezing effects as it just comes out on the turn and obviously does the damage. But uh, being at 30 health, Oskaki is, as you pointed out, actually fairly safe at the moment, uh, assuming Blizzard comes out on uh, turn six. I really like just killing the, the Blood Mage with the one, two. Uh, the Boom Bots uh, allow you to kind of uh, require the Mage to either have a clear, which it does have, but you don't always have any. If you don't have that, you kind of push for a little bit more tempo. And tempo is really important against the Freeze Mage because uh, it, it kind of stalls what the Freeze Mage tries to do from turning a defensive game into an offensive one. It usually pushes that uh, just enough so you can have a better chance of winning. Right. Uh, I really like uh, this line from Hot Form. He only has three cards in hand, but hmm. playing Druid of the Claw didn't necessarily do a whole much, a whole lot for him. As, as you said, he's going into those turns, whereas Kaka can just lock down the board with something like Blizzard. So, uh, Emperor Thor's hand does give him guaranteed value, and Oskaka's not going to be able to clear it this turn. So, yeah, the only issue with Oskaka's hand really is the the card draw. Um, he just he just doesn't have any. He's got board clears, but if he keeps drawing cards that don't do a lot by themselves from this point, he actually has a, a hand that just has to draw one card at a time, which is a really bad state. Right. Sure, sure. Hot form, uh, looking like he uses the Keeper of the Grove. Silencing the Mad Scientist would deny him Fire both Ice Seeker. Barrier or Ice Block, and that just makes it really tricky. That makes it even harder to actually draw, because that is basically a draw. Mm -hmm. Yes. A draw and play. Very big tempo. If Oskaka actually draws a secret here, it's literally the worst card he could possibly draw. Right, and obviously with the cycle, he's aware that he has the Emperor Thor's hand down, so any other cards <laughs> he puts into his hand, those are going to get discounted and just continue to uh, have this incredibly cheap and effective hand at dealing damage. He already still has like enough reduction on stuff from Emperor Thorson that even if he draws Force of Nature, he can use two Savage Wars, and that's guaranteed 22 damage as long as he has the board space to what do so. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure unless Blizzard or Ice Block come out actually, uh, Hoskaka Hoska is just dead. I mean, Blizzard's going to come out. It's a very easy read for Hoskaka, but, right, uh, but kind of crazy if, how quickly that drew Like if he draws Force of oh, Nature now, it's... Wait. Crip, it happened. <laughs> Crip, has been, Crip has been our own doomsayer That's when it comes right. to, uh, to Dr. Boom, yep. warning us of the four damage boom bots to come. 
and it, it worked out. Druidical has to be played on Taunt here. You have to play around Flame Strike. You have to give credit for it, especially after just playing 4-4. Four, four. Free Savage Roar. One. one free Savage Roar, one one mana Savage Roar. Yeah, it's just this This game is one force of nature from being very, very ugly for Urskaka. Right, and also yeah. has the way, you know, opportunity cost of like, if he chooses to clear, he's going to take four damage. Um, you know, does, when can he even develop secrets? Is he going to even get any uh, thing besides stalling the game? Because he needs to find a way to win against Druid, even though right now he's doing his best to survive. Mm -hmm. um, well, he played Blizzard last turn, um, even though Frost Nova basically accomplished exactly the same task, because Blizzard is just a another like very clunky card to use. Uh, it allows him here to use uh, a secret and Frost Nova, which uh, gets a little more favorable. I, I think at this stage, when you've given two cards heavy discounts, and really the only card in hand is the last one that he drew last turn, which could be literally anything. You, after a certain point, Emperor Tharson has already done his thing. Yeah. Right. So um, often we see players going overboard just to get rid of that card immediately. If that doesn't happen, in the rare case it doesn't happen, you just leave it on the board and hope for the best, which is what we're seeing now. Yeah, and the free Savage Roars are... I mean, basically, even if one Savage Roar was free, it would be still really tricky to kind of navigate. Hotform's still looking for that one force of nature. And Muskaka just looking for a card <laughs> that does something besides stall and clear. Yeah. This is his last freeze, though. So by playing things like Ancient of War, which could stick, I mean, each Savage Roar is four damage with one minion mm -hmm. on the board. It's still a pretty decent amount, no, man. plus a swipe. That card's actually terrible. Yeah, for Thorson reducing this hand. Wow, that card is the worst one in the deck. It's pretty <laughs> yikes. That's uh, it's definitely not a situation where you're you're glad to see either of those cards because Emperor Thor's hand, while obviously very powerful in its own right, he's much more powerful like three turns ago before you right. start playing the board clears. Uh, obviously, becomes incrementally more powerful based on the number of cards in your hand. And uh, as Kaka, as you point out, he hasn't found that arcane intellect. He hasn't found any acolyte of pain. Those draw engines that allow him to get to having that massive hand size, that's really rewarded by Emperor Thorzan. Yeah, the loot hoarders can sometimes be okay, especially in, in the early game, but when you're floating like nine mana and you can't play anything and you get a loot hoarder, it's basically like increasing the chance that you draw something good next turn. And the funny thing is that didn't even happen. He drew like, out of the very few cards that still don't do very much, he drew two of those. Right, we see Hotform here actually going to I think he's going to try to pop, the, yeah. Yeah, so pop the block. At, at this threshold, it doesn't really matter if he uses Savage or swipes to pop it. Although, um, the reason being because uh, he's going to put him at low enough health that he can just hero power him down anyways. And if he draws Force of Nature, for example, then Force of Nature would just be too damage. See, double, double swipe. So he sees for an opportunity to pop, and he goes for it. Yeah, the funny thing is when you use Swipe there like that, it makes it so Ice Barrier uh, will counter your attack next turn. Yeah, that and there's is, two of them. That's one thing to consider. Uh, looking at what Hotform just did, for the reasons you brought up, mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily super sure I would agree with that because Druid's uh, ability to deal direct damage based on spells is actually just limited to Swipe. And Keeper. And Keeper. keeper. The Grove right, okay, so awesome. he has only used one Keeper. So maybe it's okay, mm. but only having Big Game Hunter in your hand, uh, he's pretty much living on the top of his deck now. Yeah. I, I think here, Oskaka, um, hmm. I mean, if he doesn't draw well next turn, he loses. There's just no doubt about that. It's it's unlikely, because, I mean, you know what's in basically every Druid deck, right? So you know the two swipes are gone, and you know that the Keeper's gone. I really would not be surprised to see the Emperor and Ice Lance on the 5-4 uh, here. Might, uh, might be something we see in the next uh, turn or two, especially if he doesn't draw any, anything better. Well, he's not going to take the risk of direct damage. Uh, Hotform knows that he eventually has to deal with it. Second BGH comes to <laughs> hand, basically played in Jungle Panther mode, and he will continue to try and pressure the opponent out. Yeah. Well, Kaka needs to draw into first, like, maybe card draw, and then into something else. Uh, otherwise, he's going to have to try to ride the Emperor train. Oh, man. Well, this does allow him to get rid of the 5-4 if he wants to. Uh, it doesn't feel good. It, this is small victories talk you're gonna, here. You're going to need that for, like, like uh, Antonitis. Like, you're going to need to use a second ice dance to help you secure a board that can win. Oh, wow. This is the smallest Emperor Thorzan in the history of Emperor Thorzan. I think people watching might feel like, oh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm never playing Freeze Mage ever on ladder. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but the truth is, 
uh, Osaka is drawing like amazingly bad. Like truly, you, you, yeah, this you, is one you, of the, this, you it's could one of the not most draw worse than some of these. The, some of these last few. Turns. I mean, we saw we saw Taj earlier chained together. What was it like? Twenty eight damage with all the spells. At the end of the day, Freeze Mage is a combo deck. Yes. It obviously doesn't work the same as Grim Patron uh, did prior to the Warsong Commander change, but it is a combo deck, and if you don't get those combo pieces in the right order, that's, uh, that's kind of what can happen. There's a real uh, inconsistency to it, which is why, you know, decks like Druid or Face Hunter are usually more reliable, you know, say like ladder decks, because they have that high degree of consistency. Yep. Freeze Mage, very powerful in its own right, but yeah, if it doesn't get the tools it needs at the right time, uh, mm. especially against a class like Druid, mm -hmm. things absolutely get bad for them. Well, here it looks like you only have one play. You have to trade off the Tharson. You have to play the Doomster. You have to Ice Lance the 5-4. You're taking five damage. You're not quite dead yet. And you're crossing your fingers for your next draw. Yeah. Yeah, uh, again, he's gonna, you would have to wish for draw into something good, like mm -hmm. Heal Bot. Um, the problem with drawing Alex Straza is that it would just get shut down by making my number two. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Top Form couldn't play that if he wanted to here. So it would True. absolutely be that case. I think, though... Oh no, he would be at one. Hmm. We've talked a lot yeah, about. you're what, right. Uh, you wouldn't need like heal pot or something. We talked a lot about what Oskak is doing here, but I think it's worth pointing out that Hot Form has so many tech cards in this Druid deck. Mm -hmm. Seen two big game hunters now, a Harrison. Uh, this this feels to me like a very clear read that he was expecting a lot of secret paladin. I also t I asked him exactly that question actually. Right. And uh, he said kind of something that came to my mind uh, a bit earlier uh, in one of the other matches because we saw the double big game hunter I think from one of the uh, Chinese players. Right. And the idea is that um, with the metagame being, being so aggressive, and sometimes when it is control, it's polarized in a very heavy control deck. In the control case, the big game hunter kills the big stuff. But often in the early game case, you, you have to use your shades. Um, oh, man. You have to use your shades very aggressively. Right. So it's the same as a big game hunter in so many instances. That's fair, and that's uh, that sounds like the exact sort of answer Hotform would give. Very high IQ player, much like Oskaka. Uh, Oskaka is going to now go down 0-1. Uh, yeah. Hot form taking, uh, you know, just a reasonable lead in this series. Nothing too crazy. Oskaka, obviously, more than capable of digging himself out of the situation. I feel like if Oskaka just just drew a decent card when he when he needed one, and and there was like probably three turns of opportunity for that to happen. He, yeah. he just kept getting blank after blank after blank. Yeah, there was definitely moments where Oskaka potentially could have swung. Um, his opponent used Keeper, for example, and he didn't have a way to clear the board. So if he drew Doom Doomsayer any time after he used those freezes, yeah. uh, the board would have been cleared and potentially could have stopped some of the aggression. Uh, and then we saw that he drew Antonius at the very end, and if he just had some more health there, right. in fact, it potentially could have just ran away with the game because he has a lot of spells remaining. So you never know the outcomes. That's the power of being one card deeper in the deck. That's the card. That's the power of having one more health. Uh, and that's why at this level, you want to make sure to maximize all these little opportunities of not taking unnecessary damage or trying to draw that extra card. Or just getting a bit luckier. Just getting a little bit luckier and not having that kind of hand for that matchup specifically. Yeah. Well, maybe things balance out for him. And... Uh We'll have to see uh, if uh, maybe the reverse can happen to uh, even the score. All right. Well, uh, while you know we do see that Oskaka did suffer a little bit, we do see that Hot Form is able to benefit from it, have the 1-0 victory. Uh, we're going to have a moment with Hot Form real quick about friendliness with the players. In the meantime, we're going to get ready for game number two. The friendliness of the other players, I think, would be the most surprising part. The other players, uh, although we're opponents, it feels really like comrades when you're out there you know you're just hanging out waiting for things to happen you're discussing strategies and you're a little guarded about your own tech choices and those kinds of things but when you're just there hanging out it feels really like you're with a bunch of friends so I think that was surprising to me I thought some people would be more tense about it but it's a really great feeling the way it worked out game number one in the books hot form looking to punch his ticket to the round of eight being very friendly and sociable with players seems to be part of the fun aspect of Hearthstone, and I tend to agree. Yeah, we've obviously seen uh, now with the America's Championship with this as well, we've had the chance to talk to a lot of these players, and uh, everyone's just been super laid back, super friendly. A lot of the players have even told each other like kind of what they're running beforehand, which you would just think is is crazy to do, but uh, you know, just very nice people overall. That's right. So, yeah. yeah, I know Oskaka uh, does feel pretty nervous though. He's saying like he's it's really hard for him to play 100% focused 
Uh, he can try to get the closest he can to, but, uh, you know, th this is a lot. There's a lot on the line here. It's effectively doubling up your money every single time, uh, with the exception of 10 to 25. But you really want to make sure to try and play your best because it's a lot of meaning to advance further into the tournament here. That's right. Now, uh, we see a mage mirror. Of course, both these players are bringing very different mages. We had a bit of a teaser from Oskaka's mage, though not so much. He really only drew one part of the deck. The freeze mage has that part, and then the other part draws those cards so you don't have to panic every single turn. Um, now, against uh, against a more aggressive mage, like the one Hot Form is bringing, uh, I actually feel like he wants kind of the hand that he had last turn, because he, he just wants to clear him up. Um, the, the Tempo Mage is just n notorious for running out of cards very early. Yeah, Tempo Mage early's board is really difficult for the Freeze Mage to deal with because um, everything kind of warrants an answer. The Mana Worm, the Sorcerer's Apprentice, the Flame Waker, all these things, you kind of want a Frostbolt and Fireball, and, and it's very easy for it to snowball out of control. However, that said, um, Tempo Mage is also dependent on that start. So sometimes if it doesn't yeah. get that early curve, then it gives Freeze Mage time to stall. But again, it's also really tricky because as the game continues to progress and you get lower and lower, uh, Freeze Mage has so many, or sorry, uh, Tempo Mage has so many ways to do that additional damage past Ice Barrier. So it's, it's the same yeah. situation as Hunter where it's like, I, I have an Ice Barrier up, I have three HP and I, I'm probably just gonna die. Yeah, we saw how last game the Ice Barrier extended the game by one extra turn when the Mage was at one HP. Uh, that would not be the case again. Right, the, mage. the Hero Power plus Flame Waker plus Arcane Missiles, uh, you know, Frostbolt, Fireball or even Antonidas, whatever it generates. Now here, if you saw any other creature, you would consider either Doomsteer or Frostbolt, but you have to keep in mind that Hot Form is running two mirror entities, mm -hmm. and if you can kill the Mad Scientist, um, and it's not even posing much of a threat if he's only doing two damage, if you can kill the Mad Scientist, you know that you guarantee a mirror entity, and if you play Doomsteer yep. into mirror entity, it will trigger on the start of Hot Form's turn because he would also get a copy, That's and there's right. absolutely nothing he can do against that. So here, I really like uh, developing an ice block. Next turn, you can ping the Scientist, and do. play your dooms here against whatever you can muster up on the board. Right, I think uh, two other important cards this matchup, at least to me, are Water Elemental and Nexus Champs the Rod. Uh, we, we talked a little bit at the start of this about how the Tempo Mage can really quickly run out of cards. Uh, Nexus Champs the Rod can help them a lot in that respect by just generating resources based on hero powering. Uh, and I think Water Elemental is kind of a, a little bit under the radar, but I think it's an important card because of that six toughness. Uh, six toughness kind of, as far as what a Freeze Mage can do to clear the board, Obviously, Flame Strike and Blizzard are great at dealing with low HP minions. Uh, Blizzard, sure, great at stalling things out as well. Mm -hmm. But in terms of dealing with six health, because you're not running stuff like Polymorph or, or anything like that, or even Polymorph Boar is kind of a, a good way of getting things to that lower health threshold. Uh, Doomsayer and Frost Nova kind of becomes the combo that deals with cards like that. And three damage might not seem like much, but over time, if it's not dealt with, uh, obviously the freezing doesn't matter much against the mage, but it's kind of interesting. And yeah, we're going to see exactly what you talked about, Grip. The yep, end is coming twice. Absolutely brutal. Uh, everyone's on the same page here. The end, in fact, did come. Yep. I don't know. Hot Form draws the Fireball. The Fireball is quite important, but I feel like uh, Hot Form may have committed a bit much there. Um, it, it, it feels like that point where you run out of cards and you're desperate to push for more damage as the Tempo Mage has uh, come already on turn four. Yeah, well, this is one of those things where Oskaka is drawing cards. He mm. is getting the board clears very reasonably. Uh, so yeah, I think it, as you point out, ooh, so if he plays Nexus Champs to Rod here, you can see. Okay. Uh, it, it can be killed, but it right. has to be killed. But, oh, because he didn't actually attack the uh, Acolyte, right. he, uh, Oskaka can deal with it with just a Frost Bolt. He also has the option of Frost Nova Ice Lance if he wants to really stall out the game, but I think that's maybe a little bit excessive. Um, maybe even the Fireball is just the cleanest way to do it here. I, think I mean, he just knows that he wants to um, remove both minions no matter what, and he's just getting damage in. So, Champion Sarad, you know, most likely the spell that he gets probably won't be the one that helps him win the game unless it's a flare. And even if he did get yeah, that, it's a very unlikely scenario that it would actually be. You've actually we just ensured that it's going to happen. <laughs> well, he's not going to have a chance because Sar Sarad's going to die. Yes, yeah, Sarad has almost no chance of surviving this turn. Uh, I don't think Oskaka is really that merciful right now. Um, also, uh, it's, it's kind of funny to note how uh, you mentioned that the card probably won't have an impact in the game. The last time Emperor, uh, uh, sorry, next champion Sarad uh, ended up hitting the board and triggering the Inspire effect, it provided uh, Hot Form a Tree of Life. Oh, he was oh you're to right! He was trying to down his opponent. That's so funny. Oh, wait. 
He is leaving uh, it up. Is Oskaka not merciful? Wow. wow. So, I mean, the thing is, it's not just, it's not only the uh, the spell, it's the fact that it's seven power on the board. That's what was really the big concern from the beginning. Is it a flare? That would just be drop dead hilarious. No, sharp sword oil though is a lot uh, of damage. I mean, well, he doesn't have yeah. a weapon primarily, but he it, it, it does plus three attack. It off. You can right. plus three it. You, it. It is a huge setup though. It's like you have to you have to like. Pull, uh, how do I you just I just feel like it? you have to kill the two two with with the four four. So if you play Tinker Sharp's throw oil, you can kind of uh, screw yourself by getting flame strike down next turn. Yeah, which uh, which he has, which would be right. the option actually. Right. But this is like something that Oskaka has driven himself into a corner in a way. Um, sure, ice barrier isn't up, but at this threshold, like Hot Form can just use Fireball with Flame Waker and and Mirror Images, and then that will just mm. burn his opponent down to the ice block pop. Yeah, Oskaka right now. Uh, the, the one ingredient he's missing in this game is the uh, the life gain potential. Now I don't, I don't know if we've seen an anti kill bot in his deck, but it has to be in in yeah. there. Um, I think I think before Blackrock Mountain, the heal bot uh, often was kind of something you wouldn't really consider too frequently. Right. But more recently, it's just been an auto include. So this is a this is an interesting situation here. Yes, so... That may be underselling it as well. <laughs> I think he's considering fireballing with the Flame Waker. You put him at one. You don't pop the Ice Block, but next turn, you c he can't Alex Straza guarantee. If he fireballs and then Arcane Missiles, he can pop it right now, but then he has less spells with the Flame Waker. All right, but as Crip pointed out... Uh, that's the, one that's thing the only way that you pop it right now, yeah. though. And you force Oskaka to play the other Ice Block. Right. Which is ridiculously bad. Yeah, uh, heal bot as well because he's, Alex Draw is not uh, in the equation, so okay. it makes sense. It's also, even without the fireball and the arcane missiles, now you do have the flame waker, you have mirror image, so you can get direct damage. Yep. Draws another first. Doesn't come out. Can get a heal bot. He gets oh, Alex Draw. That is that going is to be a huge piece yeah. there. That's gonna. I think that pretty much salvages the game right there for Oskaka. It, it, it provides another like hurdle for Hot Form to get over at least. Right. right. Hot Form so low on resources. You've already used one fireball. The problem right, but with him is that he has no more ice blocks. Yeah, and Al Alistraza is the full turn. So Hot Form can basically assess the situation mm -hmm. as, you know, if, if he Alistrazes, yeah, he goes to 15, but I can try to threaten the board to beat that. Right. So, like, even this turn, he might consider playing the mirror image just to protect his board mm. from the 2-2. Two -two. Sure. Uh, would you go for Flame Waker too, just because it allows you to potentially pop, or do you feel like that's too important to potentially trigger if your opponent clears the board? I don't really like the attack. I guess it doesn't matter too much. I like this. Uh, putting them Sorcerer's Apprentice is a read, basically, that you know, if Alex Straza comes down, you have something on the board already. Mm -hmm. You can go right back to pressing uh, damage. If he fully anticipated Alex Straza, then Oskaka. Or so then Halfhorn may have also considered playing Flame Waker. Yeah. Because then that's just the most powerful possible. Mm -hmm. so Drake yeah. off the top is pretty good, though. That's a really good card. Flame too. Cannon! Wow, that's Time for so some spells. much! Fireworks! Fire Lord. Yeah, but he is, uh, he's going to be dumping his hand here. But there is no board player, uh, so Alistraza will not be able to get that hit in, I believe. Right. Um, well, he. Can can double frost. You can double frost bolt <laughs> if he wants. I mean, and those things are really annoying. Ooh, that attack actually gives us Kaka uh, five health. He definitely needs every single yeah. point of health he can get from this point. Also, he has one flame strike, so flame strike number two is not really in the deck. Um, I, I really feel like Frost Nova uh, and maybe a frost bolt and an ice lance. Is the play because if you double frost, but you can't activate ice lance. Gotcha. Is there any world where, with this many cards in hand, you guys would consider playing down Emperor Thor's hand after doing what something like do? Frost Nova and then maybe what an ice lance? Yeah, I think Emperor Thorson with this hand might be his ticket back in the game because he might be able to use. Well, it's actually hard you because you want he, the eight damage. You, the eight, eight damage, damage would be so much. big. Yeah. Yeah. But I do think Emperor might be his best chance because it's also five damage if you think about it. What to do? But then, what if his opponent just plays any spell? You might just lose it. I think you have to go for risk. We, we've seen this all throughout the, the tournament. Players are obviously playing to win. Yeah. 
see here. Okay, so he kills this off in the chance that he doesn't want it to spray damage and kill everything. And that's the right move, considering that there is Sharp Sword Oil, and he knows that there is a spell from the Sarad. So and suddenly it's looking, it's looking very well for us, Kaka. Yeah, that Alex Straws is surviving with one HP is so big. Yeah. Hot Form's Flame Waker got That's a little overzealous nice. in uh, in doing the damage to Oskaka directly. Probably should have been concentrated more on the uh, the giant dragon. If he can get another freeze here, it's it's basically game over, I believe. Right. Any Blizzard, any Frost Nova. That, that That's does also a pretty, pretty good. good job there. It does. It stalls for long enough. And trying to evaluate what can be done here. How much does he have in his hand? He's got uh, the Fireball plus two Frostbolts and Iceland, so that's... So one, one Frostbolt would have to kill the zero two. So he's got 13 on board plus the seven 16? and the six. I so thir 13. 13. He has, he has 26 damage. 26 damage. To face. And he can weave in pings too. He, he can also stall. So I like the idea of him just continuing to uh, take his time here. Doesn't necessarily need to just OTK his opponent. For Hotborn, he's out of resources. Uh, his cock is comfortably back up to 25 health. Despite being at yeah. one for two straight turns, so. Yeah, he's going to win the long run. Mage doesn't really have many cards. Oh, that, that's the such a bad entity draw. is not going to do anything. That is, that is literally the one card that he would have drawn uh, right. this turn through Mad Scientist, regardless of any situation. That's He's going to play it to combo the uh, the Tinker Sharp Sword Oil. <laughs> well, uh, I guess you just make do with the cards that you have. But one thing that Hot 25 is basically like out of reach. Yeah. Now Oskaka has to just draw Antonitis as the checkmate. And there <laughs> it is. Hot form realizing that's probably not going to be his game. He's already stretching and relaxing. Yeah, Antonitis is perfect here. You can play Antonitis and uh, Frostbolt Ice Lance your opponent's Antonitis to just get two more fireballs. Sure. Or and you can even fireball your opponent's face as well. I mean, you have you have massive discounts at this point. Yeah. It, it's almost inconsequential because Hot form is out of cards, so Hot form can't even. Or, I mean, how does he even answer this type of hand at all? Uh, Deathwing, and then Oskaka plays the Deathwing to get rid of all his cards, and then he draws a big game hunter to kill the Deathwing. Yeah, he's got enough damage to kill him even beyond the Deathwing, because he's got four fireballs. Gives them an extra card just out of safety measure. Flame Strike right. and Mana Worm. Not quite. Yep. Yeah, that is going to do it. The five from the Antonitis and the 12 from the two fireballs is, uh, is enough. Oskaka takes it. It's true. So the Freeze Mage prevails for Oskaka, beating out the Tempo Mage. And that means that uh, we're one step closer to finding out how good is the Rogue as limiting factor, as well as that well, Patron Warrior. One player will have to win with their Rogue. Um, uh, the really interesting point for me is uh, is going to be how this Patron Warrior actually matches up against this stuff. I think um, th the old Patron Warrior, that, that is no more, the, the charging uh, patrons, um, I think, used to do uh, kind of a fair matchup against the Rogue. Mm -hmm. um, the Rogue often just put too much pressure if you got one of those very aggressive starts. Sure. And I feel like the alternate win condition of the patrons, where they just pop a bunch of patrons, right. that isn't actually a win condition against the Rogue because that's what they'll save Blade Flurry to deal with. Right. So um, it feels like the rogue would actually kind of dominate the the patron warrior. While I'm not exactly sure if Oskaka rogue uh, will dominate the mage because the mage is a lot more aggressive. Yeah, that's a really hard question to answer, considering that uh, the deck's very new and the matchups aren't exactly fleshed out yet. Mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, against mid-range decks, uh, Rogue does have this weird, like, maybe it's slightly unfavored, maybe it's slightly favored, depending on how your deck is, depends on which player you're asking. Um, so I would definitely just call it even for now, because uh, uh, I don't really see any weapon hate on either side to really help bolster them. Like, sometimes rogues in desperate situations run Harrison Jones like if they had to be Control Warrior, or even vice versa. Patron Warriors patron run warrior runs, Harrison just yeah. to beat other Patron Warriors. Those kinds of things, if you include them in a deck, really help those matchups, but I don't really think that's the case. I do like Water Elemental in Hotform's Tempo Mage, because that does a, a really good job of contesting weapon classes, so that might be something that kind of factors in. And that's I wanted true. to point out really quickly, the you called it early on in that last ma matchup where was the Doomsayer into the Mirror Entity. Mm -hmm. Mirror Entity is one of those cards that traditionally gives other classes fits because it's a, it's a big tempo move. You're usually not sure what you want to play into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, that ended up kind of just giving Oskaka a super strong start there. And it's, it's a free, uninterruptible board right. player, right? <laughs> yeah, so it was, uh, it was very solid. But 
Um, I like, I don't know, as far as rogues go, I haven't seen a rogue mirror since Miracle Rogue. Okay. Well, uh, well, we'll walk you through it when the time comes, if the time comes for it. But for now, we're going to take a quick break, get ready for game number three. And when we return, we're going to see who's going to get the series edge between Hot Form and Oskaka. So my family, they were a little bit questionable at first. You know, obviously esports is new to them. But after some explaining and, you know, like people flying me out to different parts of the world, you know, now I'm qualified for the world championship. So that's a big deal. I mean, my friends are pretty... Uh, Interested, of course. I mean, they really, really think that it's cool that I'm traveling and doing all this cool stuff. All right, Oskaka slowly getting support of all of his friends and family. I hope you fans as well are supporting him. Hashtag EU win if you believe Oskaka's going to win or you want him to win. Or you can hashtag NA win for all those hot form fans. One game apiece with Mage Rogue versus Rogue Warrior. I'm not really sure what's uh, what's the best. I, I do feel like um, you know that, that Patron Warrior is still mm -hmm. unexplored or uncharted territory. Well, that's, that's the flip side of the coin. In, in, in Conquest, often it's not what's the best. The best deck still only gets one win. It's sure. often what, what the worst deck or what the, the least Gosh, fitting deck the in the lineup is. Deck. And I think in this case, it really is the Patron Warrior. I didn't quite uh, think about the, the freezing factor, but if, if you consider the, the freezing potential of the Mage, it seems like the Mage probably has a pretty good matchup against the Patron Warrior, as also I, I think the Rogue does as well. So it feels like the Patron kind of missed the opportunity to grab the win against the Druid, as it has three times in the tournament so far. Water Elemental is just a thorn in the side of weapon classes, not even just for the, the freezing effect, but that six toughness is, is just really difficult to remove. It's yeah. actually, I think, probably one of the best cards in the Mage Suite, because obviously it's a basic card, but uh, for both the Rogue and the Patron to deal with, I mean, you may see a Rogue forced to use some, like, Sap on it, which always feels bad to use on a Water Elemental. Uh, so, very curious to see how this goes, especially since Hot Form did queue into this uh, Temple Mage that he brought with him. Well, um... The players have not mulliganed anything yet, but uh, it seems that Oskaka is more likely to have a better hand here. Yeah, he has the coin, which is really big. He has prep, which has also been proven to be a very valuable asset as well. Not to mention he has minions. Minions with preparation is what you want to combine it with. Even though ultimately prep spell gets spells, it's any sap or eviscerate that he gets makes it much more powerful. All right, well, uh, even though Skaka has all these answers, none of them are really... Uh, actually, yeah. he could have Deadly Poison to kill that. Yeah, he but now with Mirror Weapon and then prep the Deadly Poison, which seems unbelievably wasteful, and you <laughs> should never see that happen. But. Oh, we might even see an early Blade Flurry come out. So it's interesting to note, uh, you pointed out, uh, Rogue has a coin here. Very important to Rogues because it enables their combos, mm -hmm. uh, both spells and minions. SI7 Agent is usually so good at taking control of the board early on, it comes out, it does two damage. Mana Worm is just one of those actual uh, minions you don't tend to see uh, against the Rogue that much that actually does a good job of dealing with the SI7 agent because it just can't be outright killed. Yeah. And with the uh, walls up there, the O2 walls, I uh, can't even just finish it off with the dagger just yet. Often you never want to draw cards on turn three. You want to draw cards mm. um, in, in, a, in a stage where you just have nothing else to really do or you need a specific answer. But here, uh, Oskako really was just planning to Deadly Poison Blade Flurry, and he, he could have done it last turn, Yeah. but I think he, he was just looking for one extra card to make it work. Well, he picked or up one a better creature. creature now with Prep Fan and SI. If he couldn't check this Mana Worm for one more turn, I would say that this game would have turned out to be a disaster because he would take too much damage. And the, pro the problem is that it eventually curves out that Hop Worm would land on Boom, and Boom is the Rogue Assassin. Like, that card is so hard for a Rogue to deal with. Sap it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just keep sapping it. I, I've tried that before. It does not work out. No, you, no. Those Boom Bots are I still mean, real annoying. It, Sometimes it does, but it's, like, very rarely. Yeah, it's, it, it, it kind of leads into that situation that gets a Reddit post where the, the true form of Dr. Boom with three Boom Bots on oh, either side. <laughs> that's usually a Rogue uh, game. Oh, speaking of, uh, of things that, that could end up this on Reddit. This is awesome. Uh, um, Big Van Cleef? Yeah. You like Big Van Cleef? I love Big Van Cleef. I might, I mean, I wonder if there is also room for um, an Azure Drake, but I guess this makes more sense given that he can just go for a 10 10 Van Cleef <laughs> and force his opponent to immediately respond to it. Van Cleef's just going to grab it a very quick win. Golden Van Cleef is so pretty, too. The Brotherhood shall come uh, And Oskaka's going to call digits. Hot Form uh, a lapdog. 
And, uh, I don't believe Hawthorne has a single card to deal with this. Okay. Not a Polymorph or Silence. That's the only way you can Oh, wow. Kill. Oh, actually, he, he does have a... Does, is he running Spell Slinger? Spell Slinger Earth Shock? That would be pretty insane. I mean, I that guess you can, be, still, course, <laughs> you can still get the Nexus Champion, I guess, off of it. Yeah. But either way, Hot Form is dead next turn. This could have been the quickest game of Rogue we've seen all tournament long. I mean, I'm sure players who, who played in the uh, Vanilla Warcraft can agree with wow. me. Edwin Van Cleef back in the day was a pretty tough opponent, so. Wow, this is insane. Uh, I, I don't believe he has control, so he needs control. Yeah, he just uh, oils. Oh, he just oils, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's it. Game three wow. in the books. Rogue continues its win rate, and you know what? It dodged the other Rogue, so like, what if Hotform's Rogue wins, and then all of a sudden Rogue has one of the strongest win percentages in the world? Well, Turn believe, six kill, pretty good. I believe Rogue has won three games and lost one so far. Correct. Um, Priest is still a hundred percent. Two and zero. Oh. Um, Warrior is pretty high War except for life. Coach, Warrior, right? Warrior is is pretty high, but it's really Patron Warrior that's undefeated at three zero. And then but Shaman. now Oskaka will have to see if he can uh, keep that statistic high. Uh, he is challenged with his Patron Warrior once again. So far, the Patron Warrior has been undefeated, but so far the Patron Warrior has somehow miraculously only queued against Druids, which we've learned at least from it's this good. tournament. That it's a good matchup. It's, it seems to be a pretty good matchup for Patron Warrior. Yeah. Right. Now, I think, uh, I mean, obviously, as, as Brennan put it out, we haven't actually had a chance to really kind of see how this all plays out long term because it's still a fairly new change. I feel like the Patron Warrior can still do reasonably against yeah, of course. The, against Temple Mage and Rogue. Uh, that said, obviously, Rogue's ability to clear the board. I think it's actually a very bad matchup against Rogue from what, I, what I've seen the Patron Warrior play. The win condition uh, is either you have a frothing that can't be dealt with, but Rogue is master of dealing with things. <laughs> and, just and, dealing and, with and it. And the secondary condition is you just spawn uh, a whole bunch of Grim Patrons. And yeah, I mean, sometimes the Rogue doesn't draw Blade Flurry, but with all the card draw and all the mechanics that allow you to maybe get those cards, it seems like the Rogue is likely to have an answer. All right, well, we're, uh, we're going to get to put your theory to the test here. I do feel like it's there are some caveats to it. The first is that Warrior still has its weapons, which are very effective against Rogue. Mm -hmm. And the second is that it's still hot. It has also minions that Rogue can't deal with, like Dr. Boom. And we're talking about Dr. Boom on the other side of it when um, Hopholm was playing it. But if Oskaka curves decently, has weapons to remove, keeps his board safe, and he's still gaining armor through, like, Armorsmith, if he stalls long enough, he can set up a Gromosh kill because Rogue will naturally lay, uh, use its own health as a resource to gain board advantage, but that advantage means nothing if you die the next turn. There's also another dynamic to this, actually, with how few rogues actually exist on ladder and how underplayed the Grim Patron Warrior is. I think the experience Oskaka might have for this match might be very minimal, or none. It could be the opposite side, too, where... Oskaka has played so much Rogue that he's one of the few people who actually understands it. I mean, he has Rogue in the lineup. So if there's a player that does understand that side, maybe it is Oskaka, because he also has a teammate in Sixo who's played this deck a lot and who can help walk him through. Versus Tice, for example, I'm not sure how much Tice has probably practiced against Rogue with that patron deck. It's, it's a very tricky wow. scenario. The you, South Sea deckhand on turn one, that yeah. is it's ambitious. You're definitely right about that, but... Like, uh, Sixo has played this new patron a lot, mm -hmm. but he's played it on ladder. That's true. There are no rogues Well, he on played ladder, in a couple right? tournaments, but they got banned. Okay. <laughs> Which is the ironic thing. Yeah. Now, you did mention South Sea Deckhand, Rob. Um, very interesting tech choice because it's enabler for the, uh, the oil. And it also is usually your answer to Mirror Entity, and you can combo it with, like, SI7. But I like taking the immediate board dominance because you force Warrior into a position of like, well, he needs to fire war like this, and then everything else is safer and chaining it. What do you think about this attack? It, it feels like, uh, you know, you, yeah, you have to kill your opponent eventually. But um, Warriors are notorious for their battle rage, and if you have a yes. slow start, often the Warrior will play reactively and armor up. And often you can actually deny a battle rage by just not dealing damage in the first two turns. Well, what the uh, South Sea deckhand on turn one telegraphed to me is that Hot Form doesn't want to let a scenario like, you know, Fernand and I talked about, where the warrior just got re gets out of reach, has too much armor, uh, come to yep. manifest. So what you do is you play down a South Sea deckhand, you, you basically threaten to nullify the hero power by hitting every turn with it, you use a dagger to start chipping away. So this is kind of, I enjoy the, the discussion about battle rage and warrior health. Because it is one of those things where if you're only doing one damage, it doesn't feel like immediately impactful. 
Yeah, uh, but I, I definitely understand Hot Form's line of play here in making sure that you know he's doing as much damage every turn as possible to try to keep the warrior from getting a bunch of armor. I like just the um, the re weapon deadly poison here and kill off the acolyte. The, the, here's a couple of things that Hot Form has to consider. Um, the first <laughs> is, like you said. Does he have the ability to kill the warrior? Because I feel like another opportunity for warriors to fatigue broke out of damage. Like, if they can't do anything, they do with other minions. But the second is, um, how is he utilizing his resources? Because now that Death Spike comes out on four, Violet Teacher's going to get challenged. And if he passes on Violet Teacher, he gives an opportunity for his cock to develop minions. It's an interesting point you brought up, the, the warrior just fatiguing the rogue out of the game. Uh, because when Control Warrior and... When, uh, basically, when Oil Rogue was being played a lot more, uh, and there was Control Warrior all over the ladder. One of the reactions of Oil Rogue was to just put in a, one copy of Assassin's Blade, possibly a second, because you get so much extra damage, and that was how you kind of bridged the gap with all the extra armor. Obviously, Assassin's Blade is not in Hot Form's deck, so that uh, that could be something that maybe he's just not equipped to deal with a ton of armor generation. It's possible, but I feel like um, the Patient Warrior actually has quite a bridge of uh, removal and armor compared to a regular Control yeah. Warrior. Yeah. You're not running aggressive. shield mains. You're rarely running shield locks. You're rarely running shield slams. You have less, less removal, less armor generation. You mostly have like more aggressive mid-sized creatures, which is kind of the... Uh, yeah. What the rogue li likes to see on the board because it sets up a, a more feels good blade flurry. Feels good blade flurry. Yeah. When are we going to get that Twitch mode? Feels good blade flurry. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it, it might happen sooner than you think. I mean, right now, Hot Form is going to try to go for this deadly poison, but he realizes that if he goes for a big amount of Violet Teacher tokens, he's going to get destroyed by the Whirlwind effects. In fact, he's he's about to. Yeah, there's there's not much choice here. The truth is that um, you know you had some kind of fancy uh, Blade Flurry plays there, but there's, there's just you can't you can't do that. Yeah. I think the only chance that the warrior really has is to uh, push for enough of these mid-sized creatures to trigger a blade flurry, to then get everyone in there. Right. Do you think there's room for Oskaka to play Lotheb? Or do you think he should save it for when he wants the opportunity to close the game? Because Lotheb against, um, against the Rogue, especially with this kind of hand, is really <laughs> powerful. I think what I would personally want to see here uh, is... A turn where somehow Ozkaka can use enough resources and maybe five mana to develop a reasonably intimidating board mm -hmm. and then try to lo drop the low feb to accompany it. Uh, because basically use it as a closeout. Um, he's going to go ahead and start making patrons here. Uh, we are. I do, th I do actually, now that I think about it, I think if you drop Lothab with a Frothing Berserker, that's also really good. Yeah. Because Rogue can't answer it as easily, and then maybe you could benefit off of what the, the Frothing Berserker likely to survive. Hot Form has to measure the, or weigh the, the benefits of this Blade Flurry because the reality is he's Blade Flurrying two cards. He's Blade Flurrying one card because he just killed right. the other one with his weapon. And wow. that, that's why he doesn't want to waste it. Yeah. He ends up very legitimate. No, it, it's very much it. I mean, you talked about the ability for a rogue to clear the board, and that's very important to this matchup. But he has to use it as a, at the right time. He can't just overcommit resources. And maybe Oskaka will take this as a tell that he didn't have right. a Blade Flurry. Yeah, absolutely. And I like being able to be aggressive here. And I'm almost, yeah, like if he plays a Lotheb and the Frothing Berserk, he also has Whirlwind and Inner Rage. And that's going to be a lot of damage, at least like three to four plus. And that, that still has to mean that his Frothing Berserker number one is dealt with wow, too. Wow, another, another oil. Yeah, this is a, this is is it, a problem. Is it time? Is it really a problem? How, how, how big can we get this weapon here? So you would get it to seven attack. It'd be 14 plus the eviscerate. That's only 21. Right. And that's assuming Warrior's not going to armor up. You would need to have sprint or something. Otherwise, Hot Form's rogues can get shut down very quickly. I think the... Oh, can you even do that? No. Hmm. The difference maker would have been having a minion on board. If he, yeah. had, if he had South Sea now... South Sea... But that's, if he that's had one of the South situations. Sea now... It's one of the situations where, at the time, on turn one, you're like, all right, what's important to me in this matchup? Because South Sea Deckhand is, is a super important resource when it's in your deck, right? It's, it's kind of the... South Sea would push for eight more damage. It's that orc that would from, be the gap. It's that orc from Lord of the Rings that has a torch, and it's like diving towards the wall, and it's carrying all that poison. So very important to you, very impactful, but 
Uh, I fully understand what he chose to do early on. Right, but because of that, um, I'm, we're not saying it's right or wrong. We're just saying that this choice has led to this this, this juncture, which Oskaka is going to take a very dominant position. Because, well, let's see. If he plays Lothab and Fathering Berserker... He still Blade Flurry. He still can Blade Flurry, but I still think that's the strongest play here. Yep. That's a, that's a very, very reasonable play here. He Blade Flurries, but he doesn't even kill Lothab. And he's going to also take damage if he swings again. This could be the way Oskaka goes through the round of eight. And yeah, Sprint got drawn. It's too late. Hot Form is like, God, just one turn earlier. Yeah. yeah, one turn earlier, he could have drawn into a lot more answers, would have had a lot more uh, control over the game with uh, more possibilities. But all it, it, it feels like, it really feels like we, we witnessed this in the Freeze Mage game that Oskaka had, where you drew in, in some kind of a combo deck, you just drew all of one part of the combo. Yeah, pretty much. And now Hot Form is waiting to see if it's his last turn. Oskaka can't enter rage for that. Uh, unless he had Commanding Shout. That's the that's the way he could have done it. Rampage. <laughs> I love it. I mean, Oskaka has kind of been on a rampage, so thematically it would work. But I, he does I, at least have the War Axe in hand. Mm. So yeah, you threaten you certainly damage the, do the next turn. And, and it, it's really hard to deal with, honestly. And he did use Blade Flurry, so you're more likely to use Inner Rage and flood the board. And yeah, Hot so, Form would be so at 2 HP. Hot Form has to develop, develop a weapon to get another Blade Flurry and right. heal, heal or taunt on the same turn. Yeah, it's just too much. Well, with prep, there certainly are ways, but it's going to be extremely tricky, and he needs a card to help him right now. Shredder, probably Shredder's not the not answer, it. so it's time to prep Sprint. See what you find. He doesn't even have a weapon equipped, so... Oil is just too expensive. Awesome. He hasn't played the other prep, though, so... You need a taunt, you need a heal, you need a Deathwing. Nope, everything here basically helps create more patrons or doesn't do anything. And Hot Form looks like he is out of answers. He's going to try to look at his hand, though, to see if there's any possibility. Yeah, it looks like uh, this is the last turn that Hot Form mm -hmm. is getting in this match. We'll see what he uh, what he likes to do, but yeah, from what we can see anyway, there is currently no way out of this situation. Yeah. He, in fact, everything he does helps the warrior. He he helps create more patrons. He helps give him armor. He puts himself further behind in this game. I think he's coming oh. to the conclusion. That's it. Oskaka goes to the round of eight and wins Group C in first place. And of course, uh, today we are not having any uh, elimination matches or anything like that. These are the winner matches. So hot form. Uh, Hoffram's record so far here is one and one, and he will be playing his decider match tomorrow to see uh, whether or not he ends up uh, joining with Kaka and BlizzCon after all. Right, big narrative though. Uh, two players bring patron, two players in the top eight with patron. So, uh, you know, as well as priest and rogue. It's not even just patron because right. again, uh, in conquest, it's not about individual deck performances. It's about lineup. And when you examine lineup, it's the fact that they're they're not only feeling confident about patron, but they feel about confident about freeze mage. And then they round it out with Rogue or Priest. That's very fascinating, in my opinion. No, yeah. it's, a, it's a kind of a story. I don't want to say a story of underdogs, but it's a story of a wide open meta. Like all yep. these different decks being brought. Uh, I'm very much looking forward next to the Shaman on Shaman action. We have a guy who promised to do nice things with Shaman and the yeah. Shaman God. Uh, very exciting. Very Sounds exciting hot. Tournament. Sounds yeah, right. hot. The, the really interesting thing about that, we, t we talked about like how the, how the meta has such diversity. At the same time, it doesn't even require it. Um, I mean, people are just playing a lot of aggressive decks, which I kind of think they are. It makes the tournament meta a one where you can polarize it so much to, to del deliberately counter it. So really, I mean, whatever happens in the ladder, we're going to have some pretty good tournaments in Hearthstone. <laughs> I, I think so. And one is shaping up to be quite epic. The third person to go through is Oskaka, and he's waiting with Rachel. That's right, Dan, I'm here with Ostkaka, and uh, we had some amazing games in this matchup. We got to see both your Rogue and Hot Forms Rogue, but the thing that raised the most questions for the casters and a lot of the viewers was, what was Lotheb doing in your Warrior deck? Oh, it's actually my teammate Sixo's deck, so I give him credit for that. And the reason why we play Lotheb is the Emperor Thorson is actually not that important anymore in Patron War. You don't have the same like combos. So instead, you just have like the same body, 5-5, five, five, and instead it gives you a bunch of tempo. And as you saw versus Hot Form, it made me close out the game versus Rogue. So uh, are you and Sixo and the rest of your team going to be working very hard before next weekend? Yeah, I'll probably throw in some practice games there. <laughs> well, you have moved on to the top eight. You're going to be playing on the main stage at BlizzCon. Is there anything you want to say to the people? Thanks for cheering on me. 
Thanks for cheering them on, guys. Thank you for watching. We have one more game. Don't go anywhere. All right. Congratulations to Oskaka once again. He is the second European to go through to the round of eight, joining Tice, our EU champion, as well as Zoro. And there is a big uh, common denominator here is that NA seems to be struggling a little bit. Some of them are eliminated. Some of them are not going through yet. Um, and people expect them to be one of the more dominant regions, coming, considering that they are the reigning regional champion, right? Firebat won last year's BlizzCon. Um, and now this year they're not performing up to standard. That's, I think we're still doing okay. I mean, it really, it's just the EU region that has uh, had exceptional results because if, if we look at it, only three players have really qualified and two of them are EU. So, yeah, there's, there's still a lot of play left. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a very diverse uh, final at BlizzCon. Yeah, we'll get them later. We're coming back in a big way. I, exactly. I, feel, okay. Like, okay. I feel like USA and by proxy Canada, <laughs> we're coming back in a big way. That's right. Hot 4 and Purple are both in it. <laughs> Uh, we'll see how uh, Jab ends up doing as well tomorrow in the Decider matches. For now, we are going to go to a break. We want to thank our sponsors that all make this possible. You are all lovely people for tuning in to make sure to hashtag HWC 2015. When we come back, the final match, Diamond versus Pinkbingo, the Battle of Shamans. And let's take a look at some of the highlights to close out the series brought to you by Windows 10 Game DVR.